Hey guys, Nathan here with a quick blunder tip. Now, we all know that sometimes you want to incorporate a CG element into some actual footage, like here. I have this little clip of my table, and I want to put this funny pink cube thing on it. Now, we're going to see a huge difference. This screams fake. The cube is way too clear. Um, you know, it should be kind of grainy. It should have some, some noise. But how do we add that? I mean, if we do add it, and we do it correctly, that looks a lot more believable. So how does one go about adding this? Well, let's do that right now. First off, we of course need a render layer of that. And then we're gonna need our image. Now in this case, I have a video clip I recorded on a tripod, um, just on my table with absolutely no movement. The best way to get the film grain is to have a short piece where you have no movement. Now, I'm going to use five frames just to give my noise some some motion instead of just having one frame that is always the exact same. For the second piece here, I'll use 25 frames, and I'll start it on frame three, just so there's always a little bit of an offset between the two, and my noise has a varying degree of noisiness. Um, we can minimize those two because you don't really need to see them much more. We're going to use a math node. If I could find it here, math. Um, and I should mention, as I'm doing this, this is not my idea. All credit for this idea goes to David Jordan, who um, on the Mango Synopsis on Tears of Steel blog um, threw this idea out as a way of achieving film grain. That was relatively simple. And I just thought, you know, probably a lot of people don't know about this. So what I'm going to do is throw together a quick video explaining how it's done. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, we're going to make another duplicate of our image here. This one's going to be the actual movie. Now, I don't know how many frames long this is, but I'm just going to set it at 200. It doesn't really matter for my case because I'm not going to be playing the entire movie. But we need that anyways. Okay, so we have some noise here as we'll see when we plug that in, some noise from the frame. We have our render, and we have the actual video. So we add a alpha over, and we say, OK, well, we want to put the cube over it. OK, well, how do we add the noise? Well, we do that by adding a mix node, and throw that on there. And drop the noise in there. And they're going, whoa, it doesn't look right. No, it doesn't. We have to change from mix to screen mode. Um, you could potentially, if you need to, do that. I don't really think there's any difference. Um, something about using alpha from both layers. You shouldn't really have any alpha from that. Um, now, you might notice your noise is too noisy. If your noise is too noisy, just lower your noise level by adjusting the factor. Inversely, if your noise isn't noisy enough, you can increase the noise level. Um, say we want to go really dramatic. We want a tons of noise. And you're noticing that this noise is affecting more than just the cube. That can be changed. Um, basically, we would just add an alpha, or not an alpha, a, um, where is it here? A set alpha, set alpha. And we would just take the original alpha from our original image take the mixed, throw that in there, convert pre-multiplied, and actually, come to think of it, I think we can just do the convert pre-multiplied. Yeah, and then that'll only be on that render layer. So forget what I said about adding that alpha node there. We don't need that. Um, that obviously is way too drastic. One looks about right. Um, and then you will notice, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the video, when I change what frame I'm at, it'll recomposite that noise so that noise is changing and that's why we did different values on the original images and that is all there is to it so then we just need an output of the composite node and I actually have this all set up down here too so I'm just gonna delete that composite node real quick so we're using this one when I do a quick render and as it renders the cube out here there we have the beautiful cube um, has a little bit of a shadow around it that's just from a transparent plane below it 
actually it's not even transparent, just set to receive only. But there we go. How to quickly and easily, admittedly a little dirtily, add film grain. You'll notice you do get some problems. Uh, like around the corner of this phone here, there's a little extra noise because it's a shadow. Um, that's mostly due to my camera, but that is something to keep in mind. Your noise in a scene that has a lot of different stuff is going to get kind of noisy, like this. All the corners of everything, all the edges, have a real heavy noise. Um, you could modify that by putting in a math note and saying anything greater than, you know, maybe... 0.5 so anything at that gray level and beyond to make some adjustment to to make it not as bright so that noise doesn't exist as strongly um, but I'll leave that up to you to tweak with um, but basically this is really what you do and it works so thanks for watching and I will catch you next time